All right, so now we're gonna jump into a discussion of the cardiovascular exam. I should preface right off the bat that this is not intended to be a comprehensive course on the assessment of the heart. A person could spend hours, days, weeks going over all the different kinds of manifestations of cardiovascular disease, the different kinds of murmurs that can appear, the different maneuvers you can do to elicit or suppress certain uh, murmurs and cardiac findings, not to mention the entire wealth of um, of findings there may be in pediatric or congenital uh, cardiac malformations, which I am not going into in this course. Instead, my intention is to make sure that we have a good foundation on the common murmurs that you're going to find at the bedside and a list of a few of the common maneuvers that you can do um, to really accentuate uh, those murmurs. But first off, the cardiac exam always starts when you walk in the room, long before you start putting this on your patient and essentially you want to look at your patient and decide whether or not they really are in distress. You know, a patient who's complaining of chest pain could just be from some sort of musculoskeletal injury, and they could be quite comfortable sitting there and not have any other evidence of any systemic or cardiovascular um, uh, badness happening at the time. In contrast, a person who's in acute coronary syndrome, it shouldn't be that subtle if they have a, a, a significant um, coronary event happening. They may have diaphoresis, um, on their forehead with evidence of just sweating. They may look really anxious and uncomfortable. Certainly they may be in respiratory distress, which we'll talk a little bit more about in the pulmonary section. And hey, they may even be clutching their chest right before your eyes um, as evidence of the source of this crushing chest pain that they're experiencing. So having done that, our patient, at least at the moment, looks fairly calm, doesn't look like he's having a lot of anxiety, is not clutching his chest and he's not diaphoretic. So that's a good sign. We can take our time by examining this patient. 